Uh, my name is Ivan Chernov, and this talk is Moving Fast and Slow with AWS Amplify. What are we going to cover today? Uh, let me just actually, I'm nervous. Let me check that that's working. Am I coming through, correct? Uh, yes, I definitely am. I can see that. Great. OK, cool. Um, so what are we going to cover today? Uh, well, you notice that I have AWS Amplify in the title of my talk. And that's the kind of the main thing that I want us to cover today. Um, AWS Amplify is a tool that my team at Let's Do This has had a little bit of a chance to work with a fair amount over the last nine months. Uh, and I thought it'd be interesting to talk a little bit about it um, and then see if it's useful to you guys, right? Um, because ultimately, like, the real, the, like, you know, I can talk as much as I like, but I want you to take away from this. Is this a good tool for you? Um, the thing is, that question is always impossible to answer in the generic, right? It's never possible to say, you know, a tool is good or bad. It's just, does it fit or doesn't it? Um, and so I thought what would be helpful is if we go through the, uh, the use case, what we built with it, um, where it really helped us, where we felt some pain, and you can hopefully use that context to see if it would be useful for you. Um, so let's get uh, cracking. Uh, but before we do, I should introduce myself. Hello. Uh, my name is Ivan Chen. I am a senior developer at a company called Let's Do This, where I've worked for the last 18 months. Um, there are many more things in my life, but I have a LinkedIn profile for that. So uh, let's just dive straight into the good stuff. Namely, what is AWS Amplify? Um, luckily, uh, this is a pretty easy question to answer. Um, AWS Amplify is a tool that's intended to help front-end developers build apps. And when I say tool, tool isn't quite right. AWS Amplify is kind of a layer that sits over a bunch of other AWS uh, services. Um, and it kind of tries to tie them all together into one cohesive platform you can use when you're building apps. Um, so for example, some of the things it sits on top of, it, one is AWS AppSync, which is AWS's out of the box kind of GraphQL service. Um, GraphQL, for those of you who don't know, is essentially uh, something that's built on top of REST to make it easier for uh, front ends to talk to APIs and get exactly the data they need. Um, Cognito. Um, is AWS's auth solution. Amplify wraps that as well. Um, it wraps lambdas, which are AWS's kind of uh, way of doing serverless. It wraps S3, which is their uh, solution for block storage. And Amplify does a whole bunch of other stuff as well to help manage deployments, scaling, um, and all like uh, a whole bunch of good stuff around there. Um, to be honest, team, if you take one thing away from this talk, you could do a lot worse than um, Amplify's AWS's take on Firebase. Um, uh, there's a lot of differences between the tools, but ultimately they're trying to do some of the same things. So, I mean, that's what it is. The question is, the next question is, what did we build? Right? Because as much fun as it is to talk uh, like tech tools and things, like ultimately we as engineers, we build products for people. Maybe it's a side project and the only user of your product is going to be you, or maybe it's um, not. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's you know what your company's doing and you're serving billions, right? Um, but the question of what we built is always important. Um, and in our specific case, we decided, we built an app we call Squads. Um, some context about the company. Um, a uh, let's do this as a company is focused on fitness, right? Our main product is a is a is a tool that um, uh, helps runners buy tickets to events, like a marketplace, right? If you want to do a marathon, you buy a ticket. Uh, Hunky dory, uh, you can turn up, you can uh, run your twenty six miles. But when COVID happened nine months ago, we were like, okay. Our user base is runners, but our like marathons have shut down. Is there a way we can help people who are newer to this? And we kind of had this idea that exercise is more fun, more rewarding, and more achievable when you do it with friends. And so we wanted to build an app that combines some of the social features of something like WhatsApp. You know, I'm talking chat, uh, photos, videos, um, uh, like GIFs, emojis, all that fun stuff, with um, the ability to do kind of virtual challenges with your friends. Now, what do I mean when I say a virtual challenge? Well, a virtual challenge can be a bunch of stuff, but ultimately the idea is you and a group of people are being active together. Maybe you're being active competitively, you know, so you're doing a race, you know, who can who can be the first one to complete 30,000 steps? Or maybe you're doing, being cooperative, right? We as a team need to do 800,000 steps over the next month because we want to cross Africa and we'll see lots of fun stuff about Africa if you do it, right? But ultimately you have these virtual challenges. And I've included a few screenshots from the app to kind of help bring the picture together, right? Um, the first screenshot is just a landing page of the app. It's intended to uh, convey this idea that, like, you know, these virtual experiences are going to take you places you can't go when the world is shut down. Um, the second uh, play, the second screenshot shows kind of like what the app is like once you're actually inside. Right? You can see a list of your squads, and you can get some idea of, you know, how are these squads doing um, in the challenges that uh, that are taking. And once you're actually in a challenge, you get a chat feed. You can see how the challenge is going. You get lots of information about it. Um, 
So uh, in this challenge, you can see rather than doing something epic like climbing a mountain, we've set up a Thanksgiving challenge where uh, you're crossing a Thanksgiving dinner table, right? And the milestones you pass along the way are these um, uh, are uh, foodstuffs. So in, for instance, green bean casserole canyon. Um, um, but that's kind of the idea of the app, right? The thing is, nine months ago, this app idea was nothing more than a hunch, right? And we really needed to validate that hunch because I like as a, as a person building a tool, a, a product other people are going to use, you don't really have any confirmation uh, that your product is useful and valid until you actually have users. And we wanted to get that feedback fast. And that's where Amplify came in, right? Because, and, and where it had its biggest win, uh, where Amplify let us build an app in a week. And I really, like, I really can't stress uh, how much and how useful that was, right? Um, building an app is a time intensive process, right? As we all know, right? A lot goes into building applications, but, uh, and having one up in a week was so important for us because we could start iterating and start delivering value, um, which was which was huge for um, like the app as a whole because it meant we can start building a product for our users. But it was also important for us as a company as well because our general user base as a company was established runners. But this one allowing it's targeting a new audience for us. This product targeted an audience we didn't have as much experience with, and so it was really important for us to learn more about how does this audience think, what do they need. And having an app up and running quickly was so useful for letting us do that. Now, having said that, the world is not a perfect place, right? Um, and you always experience pain points when you're doing this stuff. Um, and I, in particular, I wanted to talk to you about one in some detail. So you can get some idea of what some of the downsides are of Amplify, as well as its clear upside with that app in a week. And the thing I want to talk to you about is business logic, right? When I was talking to you earlier about the different kinds of virtual challenges, I mentioned two, right? There are more than two in the app. Those two are the kind of big ones, uh, cooperative and competitive. And the thing is, as you start kind of thinking about them, these virtual challenges start to resemble games effectively, right? Um, like they have different rules um, and they interact with each, uh, each other in different ways. And you need an engine to kind of manage those, right? To, to handle all the game logic. And so a natural question when you think about where do you put your business logic, the core logic that makes the app run, uh, where do you put it? The back end or the front end? I was like, okay, well, um, a natural starting point is the back end. Um, and we ran into our first problem here, which is that AWS AppSync, which is um, Amplify's GraphQL solution, doesn't really present an obvious way for you to put logic in the back end, right? Talking through this diagram on the right, AWS AppSync is a really great tool, right? All you have to do as a developer is write a schema, right, um, of how your data works. You know, what are your tables? What are the fields within them? How do they connect to each other? And AppSync takes that data and spins up a whole ton of stuff for you, right? It spins up database tables and DynamoDB to store your data. It spins up AppSync resolvers to allow you to interact with that data. And it spins up a whole bunch of queries and mutations and crucially subscriptions, which are GraphQL's way of just letting you um, like retrieve your data, change your data and subscribe to your data. The thing is though, if you take this diagram and simplify it down into its kind of its core pieces, which I've done here, client and AppSync bits, Dynamo, the only one you as a developer really have control over is that one on the far left, right? You only really have access to the client. Everything else is um, being managed for you. So there isn't an obvious place for you to put your backend logic, right? Okay, so you think maybe there isn't a place for my backend logic. Shall I put it in the front end? And that's a bit of a pain point for Amplify, right? Because Amplify expects what, what's called a fat front end, right? It expects most of the core logic for your app to exist in the front end. And if you're building a website, something like that is really conceptually workable, right? Because when you build a website, everyone is always on the latest version of your website, right? Um, like if you find a bug and fix it, like getting that bug for users is one refresh away. But for a mobile app, <coughs> excuse me, things are a little different, right? Because it, for a mobile app, it's not your responsibility as a developer to provide the update. It's the user's responsibility to update their app. So no matter what you do as a developer, you're gonna be managing several different app versions in the wild every time. And for something like our app where we have game mechanics and it's critical that everyone in a squad is, has, is experiencing the same game mechanics, right? Regardless of what version they are, because otherwise, like, you know, if you're trying to play a game and everyone is playing by different rules, the whole thing falls, to, falls apart. And that works for these challenges as well. So it was critical for us that our game mechanics were unified and therefore it was critical that they weren't on the front end. And so we're stuck, right? There isn't an obvious place for it in the back end. We can't seem to put it in the front end. Should we just drop Amplify as a tool? 
And again, that's not obviously the answer, right? Like I spoke about, that app in a week thing was huge for us, right? Getting that functionality quick was so useful. And Amplify had some really great features. We didn't want to have to stop to build for a month before we could actually check whether our product idea was valid, right? In particular, PubSub, right? I showed you some chat functionality in, in that app screenshot earlier. Having publications, a PubSub model, publication subscription, is critical if you want chat, right? Otherwise, chat doesn't function. And it's a little complicated to build, right? Um, similarly for auth, um, the, in our app, the concept of you being a user was important. So you need to be able to identify yourself as a user and have privileges specific to you. And again, Amplify provided that out of the box. So we seemed a little stuck. We did some digging in the documentation though, and we were like, oh, interesting, okay. AppSync lets you use lambdas, right? So if you're setting up a, if, uh, a resolver, like you know a function you want to call at the backend, you can actually point it at a Lambda function rather than at an app sync thing. It was like, oh, okay, maybe that's something we can do. Maybe we can have an architecture more like this, right? Maybe with um, have, if we have an app sync resolver that hits this Lambda, that Lambda can then uh, figure out what the business logic we need to do, do is, and then talk to app sync again to make it happen. Now, this link from the Lambda to app sync is important because you know app sync is still doing a bunch of stuff like triggering those subscriptions I mentioned earlier. So you can't just talk directly to the database, but Something like this could work, we hoped, right? This seems feasible. And we really hoped it would be. And, you know, it was with sadness in our hearts that we discovered, actually, it's a pain in the ass, right? Um, it was working with the, that as a setup was super difficult, right? For two main reasons. The first is that the Lambda's uh, mm -hmm. AppSync presents you with are super bare bones, right? So you don't have any real, like, uh, compile time checks, right? As you're working, you don't really have anything validating your types are as they should be. You don't have anything checking that, um, you know, you're not making like just simple errors in the way your co code is working out. Um, and that's that's critical for something like this because all this Lambda is really doing, right, is interacting with an integration endpoint, right? So you need that to be set. The second thing was that while AppSync helps with deploys, because we're integrating with, well, Amplify, I'm sorry, helps with deploys, to actually test the Lambda, we, we ended up needing to deploy to test it, right? There wasn't a way we could figure out to not get around this. We experimented with mocking and it was just a pain in the ass. Um, like, we, like we tried, we lost a few weeks to it and ultimately we got nowhere. And so we found ourselves needing to deploy to test. And the problem with that is that that leads to a really slow feedback cycle, right? You make a change and it takes five, 10 minutes for, for you to check whether it's the right change. And then, oh, if it isn't, you have to do that whole rigmarole again. It's a painful experience. Could we solve any of these problems? And we were like, okay, maybe we can, right? Maybe uh, we, can, we can fix the type validation problem. And if we can fix that, maybe we'll need to deploy way less often. Um, and so we'll be able to mitigate that as well. And there are ways to fix that type validation problem, right? You can do it with TypeScript. Um, set up the Lambda with TypeScript um, and suddenly everything gets better, right? And we did that and found that our coding did become a lot less error prone. But <laughs> while TypeScript solved those problems, it introduced issues of its own. Two in particular. The first is that it's seriously bloated the size of the Lambda. Um, Amplify's uh, help with deployment does a lot of interesting stuff, but ultimately, like, it's not the smartest tool in the world. And so it wasn't able to, like, you know, separate out TypeScript from that deployment process. And so um, the thing you had to deploy just got a lot larger. And so um, while coding became less error prone and we fixed one problem, the other problem became worse because deployments took way longer. Um, in particular, for one colleague of mine, deployments who had a bad internet connection at home, deployments could take over an hour. Um, another thing as well is that the TypeScript typings you actually need to do, because Amplify is a tool intended to help the front-end developers, those typings canonically lived in the client. And so we found ourselves needing to do weird stuff at compile time to pull them into the Lambda from the client, which again, was just janky and not what you wanted from a development experience. This was painful to work in, right? As an environment to be in as a developer, this, this one was a struggle. We found ourselves getting to a point where we were trying to avoid writing backend logic because it just hurt. And that obviously isn't sustainable. So we decided being like, okay, how do we actually fix this problem? And the solution ended up being to start scaling back the very tools that had helped us move so quickly in the beginning, right? Um, we decided to put a custom API in front of all of the app sync Lambda stuff um, that could talk to the database directly and start putting our business logic in there. And that let us work so much more smoothly. Having that environment that we had control was so easy that what we eventually, that what we realized made huge sense was to just gradually reduce the scope of all the things you can see in the red box until eventually, and we're not quite there yet, but we're almost there, you could get to an architecture diagram that looks a lot more like what you and I 
would expect to see when talking about an app, right? A client with an API that talks to a database. That was the journey we went on over the course of several months with our backend logic. And I think the main kind of takeaway from it is a takeaway that's true for a lot of these products that promise you the world, right? And it's that they're inflexible, right? Apps like Amplify, I say apps, tools like Amplify have specific feature sets, right? And they expect to be used in certain ways. And if you want to break out of that feature set, suddenly you're in for a world of pain. And Amplify in particular kind of expects an all or nothing approach. Um, having said that, right? And that kind of brings me to the, the end of my talk, the summary points, right? Um, where Amplify, right, is a great tool uh, at, for small, limited scope projects, right? If you know when at the outset of a project, you're not really going to run into any of its pain points. So Amplify is a fantastic tool, right? It does such great work for you. Um, similarly, if you're a solo front-end developer and you know you don't have the time to like build out a backend because you're just working on a side project, say, Amplify is great, right? It's better to have something than nothing. It's great for prototyping for the same reason that it's useful for small limited scope projects, right? It gets you up in there quickly. Um, and it's also great for micro front-ends. Uh, I was talking to a colleague of mine about this talk and he talked about a time he'd use Amplify just as a micro front over the top of an S3 bucket. And for that use case, it was perfect, right? He just needed to interact with the data in the back end, and that worked seamlessly, right? I cannot underline enough how useful that um, app in a week thing is when you're playing in the bounds of what the tool expects. Having said that, this tool has its downsides, right? It's bad if you need flexibility, right? If you need to iterate and think about your logic, um, and in particular, if you need back end business logic. Amplify presents a lot of problems, and so you should be wary before you pick it up. Anyway, that's my talk. I hope you've learned something about AWS Amplify. Um, does anyone have any questions for me? Uh, Francesco actually has a question to you. So sure. how do you compare using Amplify versus Heroku? Lovely, sure. Um, so I don't have a lot of experience using uh, Heroku myself, so I'm going to struggle to answer this question for you a bit. Um, I think I, like, I simply haven't used the tool, so I can't give you a good like uh, developer's rundown of the kind of pros and cons of it. Um, Heroku's kind of goal is like, is Heroku mostly focused around helping you deploy quickly? Am I right in saying that? Platform for the world. Platform as a service. Build, run, and operate applications entirely in the cloud. I think, I mean, so one of the main takeaways as a startup, um, not having used the tool, so not being able to answer the question as well as it's like, uh, Ampl Amplify, because it's built on AWS, if you have a lot of experience with AWS, you're going to find a lot of the concepts with Amplify really clear right from the outset. Um, so I would uh, lean towards that if you know what you're doing in that environment already. Um, but I, I apologize. I can't answer the question properly because I just haven't used Heroku enough to give you that uh, yeah. great rundown. Well, you, you guys can take it off the, off the stage. Uh, Martin, uh, uh, Martin Love has another question. Uh, what are the differences of AWS Amplify versus Netlify? Oh, you know what, people? Um, <laughs> you're, you're, you're putting me on the spot here with a whole bunch of tools that I haven't had the opportunity to use. Guys, um, I, I guess, yeah, yes. go, on. go on, Ivan. Oh, no, no. The, the thing I was going to say is part of the reason we, might, we, uh, we looked at Amplify as a tool right at the beginning is because it, uh, we use AWS in-house anyway when look, considering what to do in our, like, it, it's, sorry. Blech, words. Um, AWS is what we use on our backends, and so, um, uh, and so it made a lot of sense for us to just look in that direction. Um, and we didn't consider, in, in particular, I think having that auth and that pub sub, those pub sub experiences out of the box, we found really useful. If Netlify and um, Heroku provide you um, analogs of those that just work out of the box, um, I would like you know, then you're going to get a lot of knowledge of functionality. But the best advice I can give to people watching is. Think about the features you want for your app, and then just make sure that those are ticked off. Because if you're in the recommended feature set for a thing, um, you're going to have a lot less work to do.